I absolutely get it. If you're anything like me, you just jump in so excited to get started sewing that you just cut your fabric out, get started, and you realize you've missed so many things uh, before getting started on your sewing project. I believe every successful sewing project starts with a really good plan, but what are you supposed to plan? In this video, let's go through uh, step by step a, an actual project plan that I'm doing right now to give you an idea of some things that you might want to actually sit down and plan out ahead of time to make your sewing process smoother, uh, faster, and more successful in the end. Welcome back my dear sewing friends. It is always so lovely to see you here. Thank you for um, watching and joining and do check the subscription box if you haven't subscribed yet because you know YouTube likes to trick you sometimes. We on this channel here talk about everything garment sewing and so you, we know, we all know that we all get so excited and rush into projects because it just is so much fun and so exciting to see all the fabric and you can't wait to get started sewing. But as we know, the sewing part is about 30% of actual like the project sewing the rest is all the preparation and that comes into planning so I know when I first started sewing that I didn't uh, Have an idea of how much kind of planning went in and what I should be planning and listing out You know it came with many years and years of hard work and finding out the hard way and I don't want that for you my friends <laughs> I hope to give you the shortcut of planning projects out because when you plan your project you can list everything out you can work out all the design features you can know list out the order of construction of sewing list out the steps in the pattern process because there are different chunks i think four different sections the design uh, so nutting out your design the order of construction the sewing the pattern alterations and then of course the overall design all of the testing and all of that that goes into it which we know is a lot and so I thought it would be great to chunk it down through an actual project that I am working on right here so I'm making my own project plan because I think the project plan that you make will depend on your skill level so we'll talk about all that as we go through as well I really think this will uh, particularly if you're just new to sewing and you've just started a few new garments you'll really start to realize all the things that you start listing out and when you do this it actually it helps you for your next projects too and helps you learn sewing when you start to list all these things out. You'll see what I mean. All right, the very first part we need to look at, of course, is planning out the design. Now, I don't think you need any help with inspiration. You know what you're excited to make and what you want to um, create here. But we need to really nut out the design and plan out all the design features. So you might have a great inspiration board, something like this, your mood board where you've got it from. And I'll show you this in a second when I show you my project, but you need a plan to actually design it out. So have a think, what fabrics are you going to use? What trims? Actually get those ready and get those like sampled and on something so you got it all together. Then think about uh, what buttons you might be able to going to use because the size of the button will determine your button holes, etc. That you that you do later. So you need to get all these things now. And what interfacing are you going to use? Get it out, get it ready. Do you need something stiff, light, fusible, sew in because it will affect sew in versus fusible will affect your order of construction. What you do later on. What kind of seam finishes are you going to do? Yes, and hem finishes as well because what allowances you need for these, particularly the hem, how big do you want it to be, uh, will affect what the what you put on your pattern later on. So you, if you design all this now, it makes the next process, when you do it all in order, it flows through and makes everything smoother and faster. You don't have to stop midway through your pattern and think, oh yeah, I needed to add hem allowance. How big did I want that hem allowance to be? Or worse yet, you've already cut it out and realized that you forgot to add hem allowance. We've all been there. So let me quick, quickly take you through the design of my project here so we can put this into practice. What does it look like? I'm actually going to reconstruct uh, this skirt here. This lovely kind of Edwardian inspired uh, skirt. I had made up one almost to the end and I have promptly absolutely lost the pattern for it. I know, I'm devastated. So I want to remake it so I can wear it again. So I started with my inspiration. You can see through here, I've got a lot of um, Edwardian sports skirts as they call them. Can you imagine doing sports in a skirt like this? <laughs> so 
what I've looked for in my design here is I've taken these features and put it in here. Uh, I've, I've listed it all out. I know I've got self cover buttons of 2.4 centimeters. So I know how big to make my button extension later on in the pattern making. I've got a flared patch pocket. It's going to be bagged out and a patch pocket method to put it on. So I know what sewing construction later on, I already know how I'm going to construct that and pattern before that. It sits above my natural, natural waistline. I'm going to hand stitch my fan see my facings down and I'm also going to hand fell the side seams and I'm going to have a really large uh, copy like this one a hem facing of about 11 centimeters because I want that really nice uh, extra layer of stiffness to the hem to give it some body and structure and so as I've sort of described um, it here I've described it as my Edwardian inspired a-line skirt I want it to be uh, structured crisp and the hemline that holds its shape to really give the um, fundamentals of what I see from my design here. Now that is just, I won't go into too many much more detail about that, but you can see I literally listed out all the design features and nutted out the design. So now I can start my pattern plan. And that looks something like this. Well, let's go through, what are you going to plan on your pattern? When you first start sewing and you're just making up, you know, your pattern, your pattern plan might include something like measuring measuring your size you know list out in order what you're going to do to the pattern to to prepare it all before you get started so that might mean just measuring your body measuring um the back of the envelope here having not measuring the envelope measuring what it says and picking your size the next step might include actually measuring the pattern pieces individually to work out the finished garment measurements of the actual garment measuring it against yours and then step by step list out and then decide how much ease you want. And then you would start looking at what pattern alterations are you going to make? Do you need to add uh, width to the hips? Do you need to do a full bust adjustment? Write those down from preliminary pattern adjustments. As you get more experienced, obviously this category fills up a lot and is quite small when you first start uh, sewing, of course. But these are your preliminary pattern adjustments that you want to make to your pattern. List it out in order. This is your pattern plan. So what does mine look like? I've uh, altered some uh, pattern sheets I've made for Vintage Sewing School members. This is part of a um, d designing a collection. So this is more of a specific project plan, hence why I've altered my little boxes here a little bit. But you should make something like this yourself. There's lots out there. Think about the things you want. You can make your own really, really easily. These like templated type things. Anyway, my pattern plan. First, I'm going to use my skirt block that I already have made. Uh, I want to, on my skirt block, first I will need to check the waist size to make sure that it is correct and still fits me perfectly. <laughs> then I'll, once I have the sizing right, double check that, I'll create the waistband, pattern make that, then I'll create the uh, skirt, the shape and the hem, the skirt part, and then I will design the pockets to go on top. There's no point really designing the pockets if I haven't got the size of the garment right. Okay, yeah, you get it? So listing these out in order helps my brain. Now I can just go when I'm ready for that, I can just go list by list and step by step, tick, 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 and I don't forget anything. List out every alteration you need to do. Because once you have your pattern plan, you now list out your order of construction. So this is the order you're going to sew the garment together. And so when you first start sewing, your order of construction will look like following whatever the boxes on the pattern envelope tells you to do. And so this is how it starts. And this is how you start teaching yourself garment construction. It's by starting to list those out. You'll notice that all of those boxes, those sections are sort of like waistband, the hem, the zip, the sort of shell of the garment. I mean, that comes first, but you'll notice that there are types of um, things that are all done. And you'll notice when you do this over and over again, there's a certain order that they come in. And this is because you obviously can't sew the hems of the garment before the side seams are done. You get what I mean. Although I think we all try to do that when we first start sewing, right? So uh, list out your order of construction. And even if you are following the pattern envelope here, I recommend that you uh, list it out because this is how you learn garment construction that you'll get better for next time and next time. When you start making and ch making changes to your patterns, you need to know how to sew it together yourself. So what does mine look like? My order of construction for me these days is just a few little dot points. Well, actually I would actually do this in my head. I wouldn't have to list it out so much. When I first start, this is like a really big long list and I'll show you what I mean. As you get more experienced, your list gets shorter and shorter because you can just say waist seams, for example. Let's go through here. So 
uh, I'm going to do my skirt shell and my waistband shell first and then I'll put my waist seam together then I'll put the pa patch pockets on because the patch pockets are actually going to be up through the waistband and then I need to finish off that waistband hand stitching underneath here because I want the patch pocket on to be underneath all of that as well so that's the order through that then I'll do the hem then I'll do the buttons and buttonholes right so these are just like little dot points for each of the the points when I first started sewing each of these like the um you know even the first here skirt shell what does that mean when I first started sewing this was like this was a section and it would be right sides together so side seams of skirt right sides together center back seams and it would also have finish seams press <laughs> very very specific and I mean that one page that one point now would have been a whole page like listed of steps now I can condense that and as you get more experienced you'll condense them down to fewer dot points as you go but list it out step by step as much as you need I promise that will be a key for you learning garment construction now I think there's one more important one and that is to plan out everything you're going to test and your toile or mock-up so this is kind of the overall process of what you are going to do so there's a lot of things that need to be tested and sampled before you get into sewing it because they need to be planned ahead of time it stops it helps so you don't have to stop midway through your project to then test out your buttonhole or figure out the stitches or oh wait what seam finish were you going to do on this does it even work on this fabric yeah you get what I mean right so uh, on a bigger scale test like list out all of the things that you even if it's skills that you need to learn say you never have done buttonholes before you're obviously going to have to learn that before you go into it in your garment so test out the skills you need to learn or the things you need to test and sample ahead of time and so what does this look like on my project my overall uh, process here I will create my pattern I will twirl or do my mock-up I will then check my pattern make any alterations from my twirl or mock-up and then I'm going to sample uh, my waistband interfacing method I haven't decided if I'll do a sew-in or a fusible I think I might do a sew-in and what interfacing I'm going to use on that fabric to get the look that I want I'll have to sample all that and I want to do that before I get started sewing uh, I want to sample the weight of the linen in the skirt structure do I need interfacing in my hem or a horse hair braid I'm going to have a big hem facing and as I said I really want that to hold out in its structure so I'm unsure if I'll need interfacing in that hem facing or not to give the look that I want so I'll have to test that what I'll do is cut it out have it sort of drape and fall and I think I'll just piece it together as it is anyway this isn't about my project this is about your future project plan and I will also sample my buttonholes to make sure they work on the fabric um, and of course I would only do the buttonholes just before I was about to do them so that the settings and everything are all there and then I will sew my garment so you can see that having an overall plan listed I can now big picture do my pattern do my twirl do my mock-up fix the pattern get the size right then you know yours might be then cut out um, fabric then you go into these um, your other two items here that you've listed in more detail your pattern plan and then your order of construction plan are in more details listed out from there so for me now having this out in front I'm pretty much ready to go right I can just get my pattern I've got all the the pattern alterations I need already listed so I don't have to think about them all there I know the overall process I'm going to do a twirl I'll need to check it again once that's done I already have my order of construction so when I even do my twirl that is all there listed out already as well and so I won't have to really stop mid project once I get going I'll be able to just go through because I've planned everything out and I think you'll find that by doing this as well it will speed up your process and make you stop less mid project to figure things out you know if you, there's nothing worse than getting to the end like I said before and figuring out that you actually wanted a really nice big long hem on it to get some weight but you didn't add enough hem allowance on there which all it needed was uh, in the design stage because then you could have made it in your pattern and then it's ready to sew so it's all a snowball effect but I know creating your project plan will really help your next projects come along I would absolutely love to hear from you what does your project planning look like 
What special things do you do? Leave those comments down below and remember to read those comments because there'll be some great tips and ideas there from all of us. We are so sewing community here, all sharing our ideas so we can all get better at our garment sewing. I look forward to reading your comments. Check the description box also for some extra videos that I think you'll really enjoy as well. Until next time, my sewing friends, happy sewing for project planning. <laughs> Bye.